Welcome to James Engineering here in Broomfield, Colorado. This is my father, Jim Richards, and myself, Scott Richards. We're a machine shop, uh, first and foremost, but we started out as an OEM making high-end CNC deburring machines. Uh, some of our deburring machines have up to 10,000 parts in them, and we quickly learned ourselves that we couldn't job these parts out. So we needed really tight tolerance, but we needed really low cost. So in order to do that, we had to learn how to make our own parts so that we could offer a high quality machine at a bargain price. Let's go on inside and take a look at what we do. All right, welcome to our machine shop. Back here we've got lathes and mills. Your parts are gonna start life as pre-cut material here. We're gonna bring them into the machine shop. Uh, CNC lathes here. We've got a live tool lathe, uh, bar feed option. As we come back into here, we've got multiple seats of programming software. We've got five full-time employees running the machine shop. We've got a fourth axis mill, uh, another smaller mill with a 20 inch bed, and we've got a 60 inch bed uh, large mill, the feeler here. So as you come on back here, you can see some of these parts that we're making. Um, so we've got a lot of uh, high-end, high-precision parts that we make. So for example, we're making a, um, a mount um, for a vehicle right now. Our, our perfect job is a volume job, so we're really looking for, uh, let's say, anything from prototype to maybe a few thousand parts per week. I wouldn't call ourselves high volume where we're tens of thousands of parts per week, but we're definitely looking for that low to medium volume area. So we make a lot of parts like these right here where we've got burnished holes and we're holding uh, one and two tenths uh, tolerance on these holes. So this is for like a uh, oilless seal that goes into here. We also make uh, these little parts here. It's a firearm part. We make these by the thousands. Um, we make these for a customer, whereas like these parts are made for ourselves. These customer parts are a really good situation for us because we can fill in our voids in our machine time and we literally run these by the thousands. Now being a little bit different machine shop, we'll actually stock these parts for the customer so that we have these on the shelf in hundreds and they just buy them off of us, which helps us eliminate lead time for the customer. So we're definitely looking for those types of situations. Let me show you a few of the machines we make. It's important for you to understand this because right now as we speak, we're making some of our own parts here in house. You can hear the machines making those right now. If we walk on down here, we can see this machine right here where we do a deburring for cruise missiles and whatnot. So we have to make all of these parts here in house because we really can't afford to job much of this out. We got to keep our profit margins where they need to be. So we make all of these parts in house. We have to hold two tenths TIR, a whole bunch of multi tenth bores, um, pretty precision fits because we've got a 3.2 uh, million resolution encoder here turning all of these on this five axis manipulator that we make. Come on down this way, we've got a machine for Baldor. Here we make an IDOD clamp. So this clamp's about three foot in diameter. We hold a part that's about two foot in diameter. Uh, we make the, the entire thing top to bottom. We make the rotary table. We have rotary tables from five RPM to thousand RPM. So that kind of speaks to our ability to design uh, to manufacture, to do the engineering, as well as the machining to make those parts. If we walk on down here, we've got a machine that does the entire Apache attack helicopter. Again, on all of these machines, we make all of these parts here. So we've got a pretty, a pretty good machine crew to do all of this. We've got about five CNC's to do this. You can hear them in the background right now cranking away. So we make all of these gearboxes and these five axis manipulators here to deburr this gear. I wanted to take a moment and show you why we do our own deburring here and why there's a market for a deburring machine. So when we make these parts, we do a lot of in-machine deburring just like everybody else does, right? So we'll go through here and we'll machine this edge with a chamfer tool. Um, but the problem is, is when we machine that edge with the chamfer tool, the chamfer tool creates two sharp edges. So if you feel that edge, it's sharp on both ends of the chamfer that we create. So we still have a problem where a technician has to go in with scotch, right, and deburr this. So we don't want that abrasive to get into our CNC machines because if that abrasive gets into our CNC machines, meaning this Herco or this feeler or this Akiri, that abrasive gets down into the ways and slides despite how good their ways and slides are and it wears the machine out. So that's where the market is for our deburring. 
For example, we would do that to this part. For example, on these little firearms parts, we need to deburr all of this. We don't want to do that in this machine. Our machine is way more valuable making parts than it is deburring these parts. So we might be inclined to go put this in a vibe, but if we put this into a vibe, it deburrs the entire part. What if we don't want the entire part to burr? Now we have to mask something. So that's where our deburring machine works, is we're able to deburr certain features called focused deburring, and we don't have to mask the part. So I hope that helps you better understand why we make a deburring machine, and we also do in CNC machine deburring. Hey everybody, Brent Donaldson with Modern Machine Shop here, and if you just watched that video and you're thinking, boy, I'd like my shop to be featured in the View for My Shop series, then just send us an email at shopvideo at mmsonline.com and tell us what sets your shop apart.